I'm convinced that we're all born storytellers. We're all born storytellers who've just become shy or unsure of telling stories. You know, because sometimes when I'm coaching somebody and, you know, in the middle of the session, I'm coaching this person and he goes, you know, all of this is fine, Gatik, but I'm not a storyteller. And whenever I hear that, I look at that client and I say, you're not a storyteller. Okay, I hear you. Uh, did you ever go to school? And they say, yeah, yeah, of course, I went to school. I said, do you remember getting a report card from school? I say, yeah, I remember getting a report card from school. I said, do you remember taking it back home and having a conversation with your parents? I said, yeah. I said, see, you're a born storyteller. Right. But the point I'm making, that's just in jest. But the point I'm making is that we're all born storytellers who've just become shy or unsure of telling stories. You see, the most important aspect of storytelling, business narratives, the most important aspect is the visual aspect that we've spoken about. Because storytelling is a visual process. Storytelling is a visual process. We've got to, like somebody says, we're seeing a movie. We've got to take people through a journey which they can see. And which brings me to the first, the golden rule, the first golden rule of storytelling that I want to introduce to you today. Get your cameras out if you want to take a picture of the slide. The first golden rule of storytelling is right there for you. A good story has to be seen and experienced by the listener, not just heard or read. A good story is going to be seen and experienced, not just heard or read. Seen and experienced, what does that mean? A story is going to be a visual process. It's going to be a visual experience. An experience, it's got to be an emotional experience. It's got to invoke some emotion in the listener. Excitement, happiness, sadness, fear, curiosity. It has to invoke some emotion by taking them through a visual process. So whether you're presenting a boring QBR, MBR deck to a stakeholder, or whether you're making a pitch to a client, or whether you're you know, speaking at a town hall to hundreds of your employees and your team members and talking about something very transactional, you too can use stories to make it really, really inspiring, to make it visual, to create an emotion around it. Let me demonstrate to you. How many of you have ever seen an ad of a burger or a pizza on a television or in a movie hall? Right? You've seen it, right? How does the ad come? Think about it. The ad comes, they first show the lower part of the bun falling. Then on that, there's a cheese patty or an aloo tikki that falls. With some steam coming on it, telling you it's hot. Then there is a you know, leaf of lettuce with water droplets on it that drops. Then there are two slices of tomatoes, freshly cut. And you can see the droplets of water on that. Then somebody squeezes white mayonnaise on it, which is dripping on the side. Then the other top portion of the bun comes. Then somebody's hand comes and presses the burger. Squish! And the mayonnaise is coming out of the... And what happens? You start salivating. Yes or no? Why are you salivating? It's not real. The logical part of your brain is telling you it's not real. It's in the screen, you dummy. But the Broca's region, the limbic system says, shut up. I'm going to make the body behave as if it's real. That's the impact of psychology on physiology. Another example. How many of you have seen a movie with a high-speed car chase? Fast and Furious or something, right? You're sitting at home, up in recliner, me sofa, my arms, large screen television. You're watching this movie, high speed car chase, and you're sitting very comfortably. Suddenly, the car is going, and you know, high speed car chase, and it swerves left and right, and it swerves left, and you go. How many of you have experienced that? Why? You're not sitting in the car, but stories are immersive. In the morning, somebody said that I felt I was in your story, and therefore, when you watch a story, you feel you're sitting in the car. It becomes real. What is not real, stories make it real. That makes sense? The year 2011, when Nokia was struggling. All of you are familiar with Nokia. Have any one of you heard the name Stephen Elop? Does the name ring a bell? So Stephen Elop was the CEO of Nokia at the helm of affairs when Nokia was on troubled waters, 2011. 2010 is when problems started for Nokia. 2011, Stephen Elop, the CEO of Nokia, was tasked with a very, very difficult responsibility. He had to communicate to all global employees that we're in an extremely bad situation and I don't even know how many of you will have your jobs. And he decided to communicate that through a narrative, through a story. It was such a powerful story that it created a place for itself in history. And if you go on Google and you type burning platform story, or burning platform Nokia story, you'll get the entire memo that Stephen Elop released to his employees. It got leaked to the media. The entire memo as it is, is available on the internet. Stephen Elop, E-L-O-P, burning platform Nokia story. You'll get it. 
And the story was something like this. The story, he started off his memo like this saying that once there was a man on board a ship in the middle of the icy cold Atlantic waters. One morning he woke up to a loud explosion and he went to the deck to see that the entire ship was up in flames. He had mere seconds to take a decision. He could either stay on the ship and eventually burn and die or he could jump in the icy cold waters in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and maybe, just maybe survive. He decided to jump and he survived to tell his story. And later when he was asked what drove this change in his behavior, he said that under normal circumstances he would not have jumped into the icy cold waters. But he realized that the circumstances were far from normal. He realized that he was standing on a burning platform and he had to make a difficult decision. Today we at Nokia are standing on a burning platform and we need to make some difficult decisions. For example, one of my clients in Mumbai, uh, in Bangalore, a mobile app development company. I was doing the same training for their group of business development manager. One of the managers there is Victor. And after he went through the training, he had to practice, like all of you will be practicing again right now. He said, Gatik, I want to use the Just Imagine pattern. I said, okay, let's talk. What is your context? Just I'm talking about you. He said, my context is that next week I have to make a presentation to a travel company. And I want to pitch to the travel company to give us the order to develop a mobile app for them which will make their business better. He's presenting to the travel company senior leadership team. He said, good morning everyone. Just imagine, one of your customers, Peter, has booked a flight from Delhi to New York, which is 10 days away. Just imagine, 10 days before, which is today, he wakes up, Peter wakes up to the alarm going off on his iPhone. And as he wakes up, picks up the phone to switch off the alarm, integrated with the alarm app, is a small notification by us, which is asking him a simple question. Peter, do you want the pickup from your home or from your office after 10 days to the airport? Now just imagine, it's five days down and he has five more days to board the flight and Peter's in office. Just imagine he's very busy running from one meeting to another and he leaves one meeting and he looks at his iPhone he looks at his phone to the calendar to see which room the next meeting is in. And as he opens this calendar, integrated with the calendar app, there's a small pop-up that comes up reminding him that he needs to buy a new brown color belt before he travels. Because our systems have taken care of that. Now just imagine it's the day of the flight and Peter reaches the airport on time. And even before he can step out of the car, there's a professionally dressed escort from our office waiting there, greets Peter by his name. Because thanks to our facial recognition software, escorts Peter right through boarding and security right into the plane. And Peter has a brilliant, beautiful, wonderful experience. Just imagine if we could make this a reality for all your customers. My name is Victor. I represent ABC Company. And over the next 15 minutes, I'm going to tell you how we can make this real for all your customers. Interesting? That's called a just imagine pattern. You're painting a vision of the future, picking up two, three things that are crucial to the customer. When I asked him later, why did you talk about the belt? He said, because in my brief with the client, they said, we just don't want an app development company. We want an app development company to do something because our, our objective is we want to position ourselves as a travel company that cares beyond your bookings. Now, what's a springboard story? So first of all, a springboard story is the most commonly used pattern of storytelling and the easiest pattern to master and works in many situations, especially in situations where you have to influence. So springboard stories are great to influence, if you want to make a note of that. Springboard stories are brilliant to influence, okay? Now what's a springboard? The name also is called sparking action. You want to spark action in people. You want to inspire, you want to influence. Have you seen a spring, right? What does a spring do? A spring goes down to push you up. A springboard story is like that. Please look at me. A springboard story goes in the past to change your future. It banks on something that's happened in the past to convince you about the future. That makes sense? So it's always a story about a past success by somebody through which you're trying to influence somebody about the current state. That makes sense? So reminding you Pradeep's story. Pradeep's story was... 11 year old daughter and my daughter a few years back in school few years back so you're going springboard 
Okay, a few years back in school, she was struggling with subject to pick up. She picked up French. We weren't sure, blah, blah, blah. We were a little skeptical. I downloaded apps. I did this. I did that. I learned. I coached her. I taught her. Noida, Delhi. I used to do that. She went for the Olympiad. She cleared it. She only cleared. Now I'm coming to my key message. She cleared it because we were able to help her in an area that was new to us. Past se present me again. Today, Mr. Sultan, we are in a similar situation. I see us in a similar situation and we can help you in this current situation. Story finished. So you can share four types of stories in any situation. You can share a story about yourself where you are the key protagonist. So the story is told from your point of view. Experience sharing self is when I'm sharing a story about myself, putting myself as the central character. But sometimes, in some situations, I don't want to tell a story where I'm the central character. I want to rely on somebody else to tell the story, on somebody else's point of view. So I tell a story of an other. Who's an other? An other is somebody that I know, but you don't know. So for example, if I was to talk to you about a great example of how you tell somebody what's your USP, I may tell you the story of my friend Projekta. So Prajakta was a PR professional, she was talking, and I, I won't tell you that story right now, but if I use that moment, if I say, you know, six years back, my friend Prajakta decided to venture into this firm, and she started this, she went to this challenge, then she did this, that's an experience sharing other. I've seen Prajakta's journey, you don't know her, but I know her. And the third one is experience sharing outsider. Who's an outsider? An outsider is somebody you and I know of, but we don't know personally. Le sorry? Akbar, Birbal, or if I want to influence you to innovate, I may tell you the story of Steve Jobs. Not Akbar, Birbal yet, but Steve Jobs. So outsiders are real people with real incidents. So outsiders are people you and I know of, but we don't know personally. So I tell you the story of Michael Dell. Right? I tell you the story of Ratan Tata from their lens. That's experience sharing outsider. And now breaking the rule, I said that stories are real specific incidents, but there's a fourth style of stories that you can also use, which are called parables or fables, which are not real. Akbar Birbal, the girl walking on the street, the log of wood, correct? The most famous hare and tortoise story. These are what? These are parables and fables, stories with a moral. You can use those as well. Okay, but here's the difference. As you move from up to down, the emotional appeal may reduce because the authenticity of the experience will dilute. That makes sense? Which means when you're sharing a story of self, there's greater authenticity, greater emotional connect. Outsider, thoda kam, uh, other thoda kam, outsider or kam, parable thoda or kam. But sometimes it's better to share stories from an outside or other perspective. For example, when I shared with Jay, you remember the Walt Disney story that I shared with Jay about second chances, right? Which one of these was it? Outsider. Outsider. I was telling him from his lens. Why did I not share a story of self? Correct. It's more, this would be popular, but then not also. Because your credibility was in question. Brilliant. Can you say that again? Your credibility was in question. Ah, my credibility is already in question. My credibility is already in question. Why would I want to share my story when somebody doesn't find me credible? I want to bank on somebody whose credibility is much higher in his eyes. Is that making sense to you? So you got to strike the balance you got to figure it out sometimes i'm also a coach and in coaching we are forbidden to coach people with our life stories that's one of the competencies that we follow you can't coach with your own life stories because when you do that you're mentoring you're telling and also another reason sometimes as leaders if you only tell people your stories so neeraj ko main ownership apna bata da yeah neeraj i understand what you're going through but let me tell you 15 years back when i was your age <laughs> Sorry. 15 years back when I was struggling with a particular situation, I learned this. Good. Thanks, boss. 
next time something else happens i make him sit down i said yeah na samjhao na seven years back what happened to me was this is so good but if i only keep sharing my stories when giving feedback after a point of time i'll start sounding like somebody's father who said ki tumhare zamane mein hum street light ke niche baith ke padha karte the so it may end up sounding preachy so you may want to bank on somebody else's experience to tell that story so the context helps you decide that so i'm going to share with you my trade secret and the trade secret of every storyteller every single storyteller on this planet has this okay and it's my trade secret which means i'm going to share it with you but if you share it with anybody else i will have no option but to kill you because it is my trade secret so what is the trade secret can you see my desktop now i've just made my desktop visible for all of you can you see it yeah okay so i am going to search for a document on my laptop can somebody tell me the name of the document that's coming up gc gatik charger updated april 2019 and at the bottom you'll see earlier versions of this also can you see that a magician never goes to a show without his bag of magic tricks a storyteller is never without his list of stories because you only as good a storyteller as the stories you have so let me open this document to you for you and show you what is there now this ladies and gentlemen is pages and pages and pages and pages and pages and pages of stories that i use let's take an example for example how many of you remember this one the one that's highlighted have you heard the story it's documented and the first time i wrote the story was about 4 years back and the first time i wrote the story i wrote it in four pages line by line word by word Today I've narrated it so many times, like most of the other stories that I use, that I don't need to remember more than two lines. Right now, even if I don't see it, I remember the story. I can narrate the exact same story, line by line, word by word, and you will not find it scripted. You will find it spontaneous. We're walking around this marketplace, and suddenly one of my friends pointed in a direction and said, "Hey, isn't that Gatik's father?" When I turned to look, what he was pointing at, I was shocked. More than shocked, I was a little embarrassed. Do you remember? I entered the CEO's house and the moment I stepped into the CEO's house till date I remember feeling distinctly out of place. I put in the word distinctly very deliberately in the story because it adds a certain flavor to the story. Yes or no? I can narrate the same story word by word by word exactly the same. You will not find it scripted. And he was obviously upset with me and I was very embarrassed because he stuck his neck out for me. And I said, "Yeah, I'm really sorry." He said, "Yeah, sorry, we're going to talk about it, but right now the project is off, man. Right? It's not happening." So I heard him out. I didn't say anything. But next day, I gave John a call. I said, "John, project is off. It's one. Can you keep, please get me one meeting with Jay?" He said, "Gatik, I'm telling you, the project is off. It's not going to happen." I said, "It's not about me wanting the project. It's fine. I don't want Jay thinking this about transforming. And I know we've made a mistake. I just want to meet him and I want to apologize to him. In addition to that, there's some good stuff that Meher has done. Jo baki meetings kari usne, he's gathered some good insights. I want to just share that with Jay. But more importantly, I want to apologize to him. I don't want him to think this." Thankfully because John is my good friend he agreed I said I'm going to take a flight to Bangalore just for a meeting with Jay and all of that was fixed I reached ba uh, Bangalore and on my flight I put the presentation together Meher had given me the data no story he'd given me the data of what are the insights that he's gathered about the leadership challenge I had that but I had a key message that I wanted to give and I built that when I reached the office John was babysitting me because he was afraid <laughs> obviously naturally he said acha you ready show me the deck that you want to present to Jay. I said, "Nini, I've got it." He said, "Nini, dikha na." So I went and dikha. So the first slide was, you know, the title slide, diagnostics presentation to Mr. Jay Kumar, blah blah blah. John went to the second slide and he flipped. <laughs> he went to the second slide and he looked at me. He said, "Ye kya hai? What is this?" I said, "Nini, yeah, this, this, this something I want to share." Yeah, toh yahan par story wagera toh nii kar raha na. I said, "There's a message." He said, "Boss, ye nahi chalega." ये जय के साथ बिल्कुल नहीं चलेगा ही इज वेरी एनालिटिकल ही इज ऑलरेडी अपसेट विद यू गाइस प्लीज डोंट ट्राई दिस स्टंट सेयर आई सेड प्लीज ट्रस्ट मी आई गेन यूज्ड व्हाटएवर आई कुड इन्फ्लुएंसिंग विद हिम एंड ही अग्रीड बट ही वाज वेरी स्केप्टिकल 
John and I went to Jay's room for the meeting. Jay met me very nicely. It wasn't as if he was acting bad. He met me and said, good to meet you, Gatek, and you know, coffee, tea, what will you have? Very nice, very cordial. And I sat down, I connected my laptop to his screen in his office, and we were ready for the first slide. And John was sitting next to me. I started the meeting, I said, Jay, first of all, thanks so much for giving me this time to meet up with you, really appreciate it. Uh, even before I talk about the diagnostics or anything, I want to share something with you. I went to the next slide. The next slide was a full screen image of Mickey Mouse. One full screen image of Mickey Mouse. And I said, I want to share something with you, Jay. Because I'd done a little bit finding out about Jay. And I knew that he had two kids, similar to my kids' age. I said, Jay, I want to share something interesting with you. Showing Mickey Mouse. says, you know, you and I have grown up watching these cartoons, Disney cartoons. And I'm sure your kids and my kids really enjoy watching these cartoons even now. But none of this would have happened if something hadn't happened with Disney. I don't know whether you're aware, Jay, but when Walt Disney decided to make his first production, it wasn't about Mickey Mouse, it was a rabbit, Roger Rabbit. And he needed $10,000 to make his first production, and nobody was willing to give him that because nobody believed in his vision. Eventually, there was one gentleman who agreed to give him a loan of $10,000, which Walt Disney took and put into his first production. Unfortunately, the first production flopped, and the $10,000 went down the drain. But Mickey Mouse knew that he had something good to offer and he wanted to do it again. This time around, he needed $15,000 for his second production. Nobody after his first failure was willing to bet on him. Guess who gave him the $15,000, Jay? The same person who gave him the $10,000, who lost the $10,000, gave him a second chance and gave him $15,000. And that's when Mickey Mouse was really born. That was the first successful production of Walt Disney because he got a second chance. Jay, I know we've messed it up completely and it's completely our mistake. I'm not here to justify it. I know it was a bad decision, it was a mistake. But I believe in second chances and I hope you do too. Because I want to talk to you about what are some of the insights that we've gathered and if you were to partner with us, what is the value that we can bring? I'm just going to take 10 more minutes of your time to share that with you. I shared that with him. This is six years back. This became our first client in Bangalore. In 2013, 2014, we signed the contract. They became our first client in Bangalore. It was the client because of whom we were able to hire our first resource in Bangalore. Right. So to your point, depends on the story. You're absolutely right. And you know, I'm going back to what uh, Vatika said that stories can be used in any situation is what she said. And the way I like to say it is that stories can actually be used in any situation, including the situation that you said, 19 people introduced. Stories can be used in any situation. I think what it depends really on is whether you've got the right story to tell and whether you know how to tell the story right.